What's going on y'all? I'm Czar, and in this video I want to cover the new features that were added to Studio One 5.4 that didn't make the highlight reel. So my previous video I covered the four new main features that were added to Studio One. Uh, the chord display, exporting multiple file formats, the uh, M1 native compatibility, and plug-in nap. And now we're going to look at some features that didn't really get discussed uh, when this announcement came. So I'm gonna pull up the release notes here and we're gonna go through these, or some of these, not gonna go through all of them, but we're gonna start here with improved autosave behavior. So apparently this annoyed a lot of people. It never really bothered me, but you would see the uh, Studio One autosave pop up in the middle of your session. And you know, that could definitely be annoying, but it, it again, it never bothered me, but you know, I'm glad that with this improved autosave behavior now, it should just all happen in the background and not even bother you at all. So it shouldn't affect anything you're doing anymore now. Uh, next one is improved court detection. So I've noticed that not all the time, but sometimes when I bring in loops from like Loop Cloud and they're already tagged with a certain key, and then I put it through the court track, it says that it's a different chord than what the loop says it is, which I found strange. So we'll see if that happens less now with this improved chord detection. Uh, next one is updated plugin manager with statistics. So let's look at that because this one's pretty big. So I'm going to go to the plugin manager here. And all of this looks familiar, but we've got statistics now which shows you when you last used the plugin, which is really handy to let you know which ones you haven't used in a long time. And going back to plugins here, we also have the plugin version listed and last modified is really interesting as well. So we can see here my, uh, yes, maybe about right. The McDSP, my McDSP plugins here shows two years. Uh, last modified. Curious where they're getting this information from because I know I installed these less than a year ago when I got this new iMac. Well, ooh, I guess that's been a year now. It still hasn't been two years though. So, yeah, I'm not sure where they're getting these these numbers from. Uh, but the last modified, I'm just assuming, is when it was last updated here in Studio One. But what I'm Let's just, I'm just scrolling, looking at some of these. So yes, this is really interesting, actually. Oh, wow. Seven years. <laughs> this is interesting. Okay, Sonox, six years. I can believe that. I, I know I haven't updated that one in a while. Yeah, this is, this is, this is really interesting uh, to look at here. There's these ones here that are a baby audio comeback kid. This is weird because this, this plugin hasn't even been out two years. So, yeah, I'm not sure where they're getting this, this information from, but it's good to see the version number here as well. Out of curiosity, because it's showing my Mick DSP plugins two years, I'm going to right now download the whatever the latest version is of these mcdsp plugins 6.7.1 i don't know if there's been an update since then but i'm going to to go to mcdsp site download the latest version install it and we'll see if this still says two years all right be right back all right i'm back and let's go back to the plugin manager i've updated my mcdsp plugins and since we can search let's do that Huh, okay, well, that didn't work. So we will, let's just find them here. Let's see. There we go. Okay, so now it's switched to last modified six months. So, and yeah, we see we got a six point 8.7 where we had 6.7.1 before so okay all right so that is the statistics in the new 
a plugin, well, not new, but in the plugin manager, statistics in the plugin manager. Uh, very helpful information, especially I love this last used. It's almost <laughs> teasing you that you've used something like, what is this, two years ago, AR, none of you know what this is. But all right, so uh, let's get back to the notes. All right, so updated plugin manager with statistics. Copy external files option for songs, projects, and shows. So I know that this has been in the songs uh, for, I don't know, for a while, but it's now added to projects and the show page. I rarely, I'm rarely in the project page unless I'm mastering. I've never been in the shows page, but it's good to see that copy external files come to that. So copy external files if you have a anything that you record inside of Studio One is going to be an internal file. Anything you bring from outside of Studio One is an external file. And so copy external files allows you to copy anything that you brought into Studio One into the session folder so everything's organized and in the same place. A very useful feature. And just so you know where that is, there's a couple places you can get to it, but I believe it is under Song. Yeah, copy external files is going to copy anything that you brought outside of Studio One into the session. And there's also in the preferences, uh, you can set it to do that by default when you save copy external files. A uh, new command, insert instrument parts from chord track. This is nice. So I've got a uh, presence instrument here. I've got my chord track here. So we can... I think in the last update now we can drag from the chord track down to that instrument and do it that way. But we now have a key command for it. So let's see, insert instrument. So this was not mapped. I did map mine to, what is that? Option shift P. And so what that does is takes the chord track, option shift P. And now it's going to place the chord track chords onto that instrument track. So it wouldn't be a lot of time saving for where I have the presence right now. But uh, you can imagine if I had the presence, you know, all the way down here. Well, that's going to be a long way for me to drag these chords down to get them here. So now I can just do it with a key command. So that's going to be pretty useful. And so these next two I'm going to go over are two features that I was like, Studio One didn't do this already. So the first one is remove all under sins. And so under sins now, there's an option to remove all. Uh, I had to go to this iMac that you see over here is running an older version of Studio One. I had to check this on there and, and sure enough, this is a new feature. Studio One was not able to do that before. But I guess I've just been in the habit, if I needed to remove them all, just selecting the tracks and doing them that way. Uh, the next one, switch mono to stereo for multiple selected tracks. This is another one I was like, Studio One doesn't do this already. So we've got these four tracks selected here. They're mono, and I can select them to switch them to stereo. I tried this in the previous version of Studio One, and no, it did not work. So this is a new feature. And lastly, we have long track names now abbreviated in plugin header. So if you had long track names before, then you know this struggle. Studio One would do this if you put in a long track name. So I haven't tested this now. So let's do... This is a very long track name. Glad Presonus has fixed this in Studio One 5.4. All right. So now, what track was that? Here we go. Uh, let's do. And this is very apparent with uh, plugins that have smaller GUI. So I'm going to go to like the one knob from Waves. 
And here we go. You see, we don't have that the weird um, bordering anymore here. So that's nice that they have uh, <laughs> finally fixed that because, yeah, you get a long track name, you get those borders, and it just really screws with the plug-in GUI, and then you're wondering what happened, thinking something went wrong when actually it was just you had a longer than normal a track name in there. All right, so that's it. Those are features added in Studio One 5.4 that, you know, like I said, didn't make the highlight reel, weren't really talked about. Actually, I, uh, I think I'm missing one that I meant to talk about. Let me uh, mix down settings also stored, also stored when dialogue is canceled. Yes, that's the last one we're going to talk about. So this really bugged me, so I'm glad this is fixed. So if we hop into mix down, uh, let's see, AI FF file 192K. We've all had that struggle where we've set this or, you know, made some settings changes here. And then we realize, ah, I forgot to unmute something or do whatever in the mix. And then we cancel out of that, make our changes, go back to export mix down and everything would be set back to, I guess I'll say default settings. And we have to change these again. Well, now you can see, let's switch this to, let's say 88K. And then I cancel out of it. I go back in it, it still saves that 88K. So uh, very nice. That was very annoying uh, before. So glad that was fixed as well. All right. So uh, what features would you like to see still added to Studio One? I know for me, I would like to see the buffer size saved for the session because I have sessions where I do production and I've got a low buffer size. Then I'm mixing and I got a high buffer size and I just have to keep switching it. So I would like to see that come in a, a future release. All right, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more content from me, then you know what to do. All right, any questions, comments, let me know and I'll catch y'all next time. I wanna invite you to check out my podcast, The Faders Up Podcast, where we discuss pro audio and beyond. We discuss everything from recording to gear to the music business. So if you're an audio engineer, songwriter, recording artist, music producer, this podcast is for you. We recently started season two, and we're going to have a lot of listener questions on this season, as well as some really cool guests that's lined up and giveaways as well. So if you've already subscribed and followed the podcast, thank you. If you haven't, it's available on all platforms, and I encourage you to check it out. Also, rate it and review it and let us know what you think.